just wanted to share a few different tools that I've come across some a while ago, some um, recently that uh, hopefully you can take away and have a bit of a look at um, yourself. Now, to make sure that I'm on time, I have bought an instrument. So I've got seven tools in seven minutes. So I'm looking for a timekeeper, and I know, Jenny, that you love loud noises, so I'm going to give it to you. And I'd like you just to remind me every minute that my time's up and I need to move on to the next one. Okay, every minute. All right, so have you got a timer? Yeah. I'll find a timer somewhere. Okay. Do you want to give it a bit of a practice to make sure it works? The horn, that is, not the timer. Oh. <laughs> now, I'm also going to uh, leave this for the teach meets of future so that we just can uh, use that if we need to. Now, I've wasted the first minute talking about the horn and the, uh, how I'm going to walk through it, so it's actually going to be six tools in six minutes now. So, the first one is Murally. Uh, one I came across not long ago uh, is a blank canvas that you can collaborate on. And I thought it was, um, it was really cool. Uh, uh, lots of potential. Um, this is a canvas that I made. It was just a blank canvas. When I first started it up, I had an opportunity to invite other people to the mural so that they can then potentially join in and uh, do the same cool things that I could do. I could add web links, so that's a web link to the Teach Me. I can add pictures. Um, I could upload pictures from my computer. I could add the graphics from what's in the actual uh, site. I can choose the background, so this was the cork board that I chose. Uh, you can do things like grids and different um, calendars, maps behind there as well. Then you can add uh, sticky notes and move them around. And you can also leave comments on each thing. So you can see that I'm logged in there as Melinda Kasher. So it's actually a note that has my name on it. And then somebody else would put theirs up there and it would, uh, it would do the same. Does somebody want else want to use the horn if Jenny's not going to do it? I can't tweet either. <laughs> <laughs> um, artsy, and I love the way that now people are getting really tricky when they're buying their domain names. I have no idea where SY is. It's obviously some country that um, someone has been very clever in picking their, uh, their name. Artsy is part of the Art um, Genome Program project, which is where they're trying to collect as many pieces of art as they possibly can and find out the characteristics that link them up. But what they've done in this is just more or less created a site that is full of different pieces of artwork. You can buy the artwork, although the one I looked up that I really liked last week was $40,000, so um, it depends on your budget a little bit. But the way that you can actually navigate through it's really uh, quite clever. You can browse by different types of artwork. so by the style or the movement, uh, contemporary types of arts, subject matter, the region that it comes from. <laughs> Already? <laughs> Alright, that was artsy. Next one, picto chart. <laughs> Making your own infographics. I love looking at all the infographics that come out, and but I've never actually had the skill to be able to make my own. So this one is one that comes as a template, and you can add all of your extra ones. This is one I made on a teach meet this morning, so nice and easy to do. You choose your theme that you want to use. You can then add in uh, different text. You can change the picture that you want to use. This was a graph, so I started by mapping or graphing out the uh, people, amount of people at a teach meet. And you can add shapes, you can add graphics, different types of charts, depending on which one you want. Um, you can change, I could have added more of these to it, but having that template there has made it really easy to, uh, to just add things to. So there's about 15, I think, different free templates that you can use, and, um, and they're different types, so they're different uh, ones for different reasons. <laughs> Thing link. This is one I used in the classroom a, few, a couple of months back. It's a photo or an image tagging. All you do is upload your image that you'd like and then you click on the screen where you'd like to add a tag. You can add a web link to it or a description and then you save it and that saves on the image. So you can see this was one that we did where we looked at descriptions for the photo. So uh, the soft sandy banks sit under the magnificent mountains was this one. 
each time you hover over one of those tags, it will come up with the description for that in a different place. Great thing about this is you can let people edit the same one. So after this, we sent the kids off. They all uploaded a photo as part of their group. And then in their groups, they were able to contribute the tags to it. Um, but lots and lots of uh, uses for that one. The other thing that you can do is embed it into your blog so um, other people can have a look at it. You can leave it open so other people can come along and leave their tags as well. Does anyone get to take a breath while I wait? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. This is an oldie but a goodie, and I'd hate for people to miss out on this one if uh, they hadn't seen it. Um, it's a story... Um, it's a storybook function. So on the website, you can create your own sto storybooks. The great thing about it is that it comes with all of its own illustrations. So you actually choose a illustration group that you would like, and then it gives you an open page with all of the illustrations there. Um, here are some of the different types of um, illustrations that you can get. So there's some really um, funky ones for kids. Uh, little monsters, you can have, uh, there's some sort of old style uh, pictures that you can choose. And it's just a matter of dragging the image you want into the clean page and then writing your text on it. And when it's finished, it'll flick through the books like a, um, an online book that you can see all of the pages. One of the really good things about it for teachers is that you can set up a class library. <coughs> class library. I'll let you guys have a look at those ones. Okay, last one is actually an iPad app to finish off with. This is Daisy the Dinosaur, which is a junior programming app. Um, it has two sections to it. You can play in the free mode, you can play in the challenge mode. In the free mode, you just need to move and you actually just drag and drop the commands that you would like your dinosaur to do. So it can turn, it can grow, it can shrink, it can walk. Uh, you can make it jump after shaking it or walk after touching it. Uh, there's also the challenge mode. So what you need to do is, hello and welcome to, I can't really read that there, uh, try figuring out how to stop the dinosaur on the star. So there's one command, they just have to move that over and work out how many times it needs to move before it stops. And then each time you do that, you go up a challenge um, level and it gets harder. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see here there's two options. So it's a nice little junior uh, programming app that is really cool. <laughs> and that's it.